we could go already to our next uh, session. Um, and uh, this was a session uh, that uh, we are, uh, we would like to discuss the best way to empower and support the success of African um, diaspora initiatives. Um, uh, those Africans who already are starting their initiatives here all are uh, already uh, doing their work uh, here in, uh, uh, in the diaspora. And uh, the idea is to see in which ways could the African diaspora within themselves or African diasporas and their own countries uh, would uh, support. And amongst our presenters, um, I can see that our South African colleague is not here yet, but uh, we already have a diaspora glitz in the house and uh, uh, he will speak about the importance of positive view of African diaspora in media. And uh, then uh, we have uh, Ms. Lanyori Washa with us. Um, and who will uh, speak about an example of the positive cooperation in uplifting quality of life through uh, NGOs as a diaspora initiative. And then um, uh, Iko Mugasa is here uh, from Hills Connect already. And um, he is going to speak with us on how the uh, local government has supported or is supporting the initiatives uh, focusing on Rwanda's uh, perspectives. Um, so in this case, uh, I will not um, waste uh, much time. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, um, Obi uh, West Ochachuku, if I say your name correctly, uh, our Nigerian diaspora here in Finland, uh, owner of Diaspora Gates magazine, and uh, a person who has also hosted a very successful multicultural um, days in, uh, in the city of Yarrampa here in Finland. And he is here to speak to us about how and what, why is it important that the diaspora of Africa should positively be presented in the media. So Obi, please, the floor is yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Uh, Mr. Conrad, thank you very much for having me. It's You're a welcome. pleasure being here today to share my views on the positive, on the importance of the positive view of the African diaspora in media. I want to start by introducing myself I am a Nigerian, a well-traveled Nigerian. I am a journalist and a publisher of a magazine here in Finland. And also I'm the chairperson of the Aspora Reporters ROI, an association of immigrant journalists in Finland. Aside my journalistic work, I'm also a consultant, a cultural consultant and a a cultural producer here in Finland, we call those who organizes events or produces uh, cultural events as cultural producer. I am one of them. And uh, I have several events that I have been able to organize that are aimed at changing the African narratives in Finland. And this is our latest magazine, the Aspera Gates magazine for 2022. It was released in the month of February. Next month being June, we are going to have our second edition. And this year alone, my media, our media organization has been able, have been able to organize three major events for the African community in Finland. Uh, let me also uh, speak more about the magazine and what we we do here in Finland. The magazine is for the African community in Finland. It was established in the year 2019, and the aim of 
the magazine is to change the narratives, the negative narratives of the African community, and also to create a platform for the African community where their voice can be heard and also where they can, you know, project their individual projects and harness their talents. Because the best thing we can do for ourselves is to, you know, tell our story by ourselves. So that is the reason why the magazine was established. Quickly, I want to state that uh, this is a very important uh, uh, summit, a very important uh, gathering for us, because today the African Union is celebrating the African Day and we all are Africans. This is our day. We are celebrating a diverse Africa. We are celebrating a united Africa. We are celebrating one Africa, irrespective of where we come from. That is why I deemed it fit to appreciate Conrad for this great work and for the great job he has been doing. So the importance of the positive view of the African diaspora in media is something that worth discussing because I can categorically say that the achievements of the African diaspora, most especially in Finland, where I am based is underreported. It's underreported because I've been in media for more than a decade. I started my journalistic work in Nigeria before I traveled to North Africa, France, before I came to Finland. There are a lot of things that the African diaspora are doing in Finland that we don't read about them in the media. We don't get to see them on telly. And we don't get to read about them on the print, uh, 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 on the newspapers because of what I call sectional journalism. And you would agree with me in that whenever something negative happens, you will see uh, that comes from let's say uh, uh, the African diaspora, the community, you always see it in the media. That is when the media, we emphasize on it. They, might, they may even tell you where the person who maybe, uh, uh, where the perpetrators uh, come from, what they do, when they came and the country they come from. And you see that the, you know, the publication will go viral. But when an African, in Finland or elsewhere in Europe does something that is what's been that is what's celebrating. Very few media picks it up to promote it. And this is one of the reasons why we decided to establish our own magazine, the Asparagus magazine, the voice of Africans in Finland, so that we can change the narrative, so that we can promote ourselves by ourselves so that we can be able to you know tell our story by ourselves in finland here not too long i think five three four years ago there was a publication about immigrant owned companies in finland when we talk about immigrant immigrants in finland the african diaspora falls into this uh, section the Report stated that immigrant owned companies generated around 3.5 billion euros in net sales and employed about 30,000 employees. But I was surprised that the statistics that Swame Utayat, that is Finnish Enterprise Association release, which is very, very verifiable and very true, did not appear in major newspapers in Finland. This is a positive view. This is a positive news that the African diaspora needs. This is what we need. The Finns, the local people need to read it so that they can know that we also contribute to the economy of the country, not 
parasites as as some of them uh, think that uh, 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 that's who we are. I was surprised such news did not make it to major headlines. It was only released by the Finnish Enterprise Association and it died here. We need to start pushing forward, pushing forward, making our voice heard from different perspectives, from different angles, be it media, be it through our uh, various organizations or associations or what we do, our voice must be heard. Because if our voice is not heard, the, 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 our community will not grow and our impacts will not be felt. Like I started, uh, uh, stated earlier, I am a founder of several uh, projects here in Finland, very good projects that are aimed at changing the narratives and also telling our story in a positive way through the media. In the year 2020, I founded the Beauty Pageant alongside uh, Ms. Heziki Winner, Kelly Kalonji. Uh, many of you may have come across the Beauty Pageant called the Face of African Queen. Why did we found the Face of African Queen? Is because most of our young ladies, most uh, uh, young ladies from Africa who are in Finland, who are beautiful, who have what it takes to be a model or to compete in a major beauty pageant, we are given the uh, uh, opportunity to showcase their beauty. And I came up with the idea, founded it, got it registered, called my, uh, 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 called uh, this lady I mentioned, Kelly Kalonji, who was Miss Hezeki 2013 winner. And we planned it together and we organized the first beauty pageant for the African diaspora in Finland, and it was a huge success. The event was, the event, the, the gala night took place on the 20th of November in 2020, during the peak of COVID-19. Almost 300 persons attended, which included three ambassadors and the reigning Miss Hezeki winner. So it was a sold out event. It was an event that the African community embraced and they cherished it. And the feedback was so awesome. This year, last year, we didn't organize the second edition because of the effects of COVID-19. But this year, the application is already, is ongoing. Uh, as I speak with you, about 15 ladies have applied to become who to become the queen of Africa in Finland. The reason why we came up with this idea is because we did a research about we did a research on uh, 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 young ladies who are aiming to become models in Finland, and uh, the report that we got was that yeah. We aren't any platform for them. And that was how we created this one. Another thing that I want to say about the importance of the positive view of the African diaspora in Finland is because when there are positive news about the African diaspora, it will go a long way in shaping our community. It will go a long way in creating opportunities for people to harness their talent and uh, for people to carry on with their choosing uh, ambitions. But when the news about the African diaspora is all about negative news, negative, negative news, it creates dissension. It creates, you know, uh, a huge gap between the African community and the local people. And this is the area where we are working on to bridge the gap, to tell the local people, the Finnish people, that we Africans, we that are Africa, we that comes from Africa, living in Finland, this is what we are. This is these are the stuff that we are made of, and these are the things that we can do to contribute to the economy and the beauty of our host nation. Let me quickly say uh, this thing. 
because I have yesterday we celebrated the Africa Day in Helsinki, and I played a very big role. I was surprised. I was called upon. I was acknowledged by the organizers of the African Day in Helsinki. Why? Because our media organization in the month of March, we celebrated African women. African women in Finland, despite their contributions, they've not been celebrated by the host nation. We have a lot of African women who have contributed immensely to the development of uh, 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 Finland in their choosing career. They've not been celebrated. So in uh, March this year, I set up a committee and uh, with the help of Money Heli, we got a fund and we organized the first uh, International Women's Day strictly for the African women to be celebrated and we gave awards to them. We acknowledged the 10 most influential women of African background and award was uh, we are giving to them. Yesterday being the African Day celebration, these same women came and they were giving flowers in the, uh, 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 in the presence of the Finnish government representative. So you can see how far we've been able to go in changing the narrative in making sure that positive news about the African diaspora is maintained. November last year, something happened that affected an African lecturer here in Finland. It was in November, he contacted me, a lecturer at the University of Turku. I guess some of you may have read the publication that I, uh, I made on our print media and also on our online version. Before this lecturer met me and narrated his ordeal to me, he has consulted, or rather, he has written to several journalists from Finland, and he contacted several uh, media organizations to tell them his uh, story, his ordeal, how he was unjustly disengaged from his place of work at the University of Turku, but they did not give him attention. Nobody was willing to write his story. Nobody was uh, uh, ready to uh, uh, make his voice heard in the community. So when he contacted me, you know, being an, uh, an immigrant, I had to inform my lawyer first about, for me to know the gravity of what I'm about to embark on. And my lawyer was able to read through my email and told me that you can go on with the investigation. So I ran an investigation about this African lecturer who helped the University of Turuku to get a funding of 4.5 million euros, the biggest in the history of University of Turuku, for a project which he conceived, nurtured, and actualized by himself, the Finland African Platform for Innovative Initiative. FAPI. Two weeks to when the money will be released, this African lecturer was sacked, was kicked out. It was a very big issue. The man was at the point of, you know, taking his life, was depressed, devastated. And I told him that I shouldn't worry, that I will make his voice. Uh, uh, his voice will be heard through my media organization. And I started an investigation through the document he sent to me, contacted the labor office, his lawyers and everything. I reached out to key uh, 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 playmakers in the uh, academia. And uh, after that, I released a publication, a very lengthy one in our print media. The publication is also here, about six pages. This thing happened last year, November. So, I also set up a change.org, uh, uh, you know, link where people can sign a petition because the petition was that we will send a petition to the 
parliament and also to the Ministry of Education. So the publication that I made to address the situation or the problem of this African lecturer who was kicked out got the attention it needed. The Minister of Education uh, summoned a meeting and along the line, he was called upon, he narrated his ordeal and uh, other witnesses were also called upon to give their own version of what transpired at the university, why he was you know, disengaged when he has helped the university to get a huge funding of 4.5 million. To wrap it up, as I speak with you, this man has been re reinstated. His job has been given back to him and he has been promoted. Why? Because someone stood by him. Because someone created a platform where his voice can be heard. And that is what the Asparagus magazine did for him. And this is a huge blessing. Rather, I should say it's a huge uh, credit for the African diaspora. To wrap it up, the importance of the positive view of the African diaspora in media cannot be overemphasized. Just like the way I started, I said our achievements have been underreported. We don't report much of the good thing we do, not just in Finland, in other countries, uh, uh, most especially in Europe. We are contributors. We contribute to the development of, you know, this country. Take for example, uh, there's this uh, Somali lady who established her company just two years ago, Hoiva. I'm talking about a good friend, Fadumo Ali. Today, she employs more than 1,000 persons. This is a company of less than three years of, uh, you know, uh, 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 of inception and playing a big role in the head sector, not just in Espo, where she is based, but all over Finland. It was when she had the breakthrough that media started, you know, looking for her to interview her, to write about her, write about her impact. But when she was building, when she was, you know, still in the dark, trying to put up things, nobody listened to her. So in conclusion, the importance of the positive view of the African diaspora in media cannot be overemphasized. So we need to continue to speak up. We need to continue to create a platform, an enabling environment for our community, for those who want to inspire so that their vision, so that their aims and ambition can be you know, harnessed. And that is one of the things that Inspire Network is doing. I love it so much, you know, creating a platform for, for people to tell their story so that others can learn and also it will motivate others. It serves as a motivation to others who are aspiring to become one thing or the other. So thank you very much, Mr. Conrad, for this opportunity you've given to me. I will call it a day because I'm heading to an African Day celebration in Man to cover the event. Thank you. Well, thanks for these insights. Uh, only thing I would add into that is that we Africans still need a collective efforts. Yeah. Um, meaning that in order to be positively presented, we have to play a role. I think we need to also figure out that we are responsible of our own presentation and supporting organization like yours. So we don't come to you only when we need your help, but yeah. we come to your type of organizations to work with and along through the process. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the only thing I see that uh, needs to be developed on our side as well, because charity always starts from home. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you.